In the blink of an eye, the crust of reality was torn open by the loathsome sorcery of the Skaven. Crooked towers of brass and warpstone thrust their way into the realms. From the rifts they opened in the earth, an endless flow of scab-furred abominations poured forth. Voices joined in shrieking union. This living tide swarmed across the lands, conquering all in the name of the Great Horned Rat. The Vermindoom had been unleashed, and the realms would forever be scarred. Under magic-wrecked skies, a new war rages. It is a war of warpstone blades set against Sigmarite shield, of frantic skaven ferocity against unwavering stormcast discipline. Should the God King's warriors on the front line fail, the adamantine chain would be overrun soon afterwards, and the heartlands of Akshi would be devoured in the years to follow. During the vast history of the mortal realms, many times there were signs of woes, tragedy, famine and war. This time, however, no ill omens or portents of prophecy preceded the resurgent onslaught of chaos. The first the people of Sigmar knew of the Vermindoom cataclysm was the tearing of the earth beneath their feet a billowing of lurid green flames that scorched the skies above and the shrieking chatter of a verminous voices coming ever closer. Even as the great powers of the realms battled back and forth over the geomantic weave that underpinned reality, they failed to anticipate the horror burrowing through the bedrock beneath their feet. Millions of Skaven lives were spent by the vermin lords of the Shadow Council in the creation of massive Norholes. These twisting tunnels bored through reality itself, allowing the Skaven and their accomplices to infiltrate many vital nexuses of magical power and lace them from below with pure, corrupting warpstone. Above ground, unwitting servants of Chaos performed much the same task in return for promises of rich rewards. The Horned Rat's agents concentrated most of all upon the Great Parch of Akshi. It was here that the Rat Demon Screech Vermin King and a coven of albino graciers oversaw the detonation of a vast amount of densely packed warpstone, which resulted in a cataclysm of world-cleaving violence. On the eastern reaches of the parch, where the mountains of adamantine chain stood sentinel over the capillarian coastline, the horizon was engulfed by a tide of vivid green flames. Warpstone meteors rained down in their thousands, the earth turning black as beasts, plants and the ground itself twisted with hideous mutations. Bursting from beneath layers of heat-baked rock came spears of brass and rusted iron. Mountain peaks were cracked asunder by tendrils of greenish warp lightning, and from their broken shells emerged the ramshackled spires and chimneys of a nightmarish urban sprawl, stretching out like the twisted fingers of some ancient titan. Atop the thirteen highest of these teetering towers were mounted great rusted bells, which now loosed a dreadful peal, a clangor of madness that spelled disaster for all who heard it. Thus did Blight City, the unholy metropolis of the malevolent Ratmen, thrust a portion of its cosmic vastness into the mortal realms. In every other realm were echoes of this same phenomenon, as breaches in reality saw nexus points ravaged in their hundreds. This realm-spanning eruption would forever be spoken of as the Vermindoom. In its wake, the mortal realms were left mutilated. Those ill-fated Sigmarite strongpoints that bordered the adamantine chain were wracked by devastating earthquakes. The realm sphere recoiling from the abominable damage the Skaven had wrought upon it. A pyroclastic blast of tremendous force billowed across the parch, 
reducing any who had not taken shelter underground to ash. Fire Slayer Lodges were overrun by swarms of mad-eye vermin, the Ratmen having emerged through yawning tunnels that had appeared in the bedrock of the Duardin's most hallowed chambers. The horror was even more concentrated around those nexus points befouled by the Skaven's warpstone sabotage. Some settlers were devoured from within as grotesque parasites with worm-like tails, gnashing teeth and claws burst from their bellies. Others melted into screaming lumps of scabby flesh and fur fusing together with their stricken kin. In Hammerhall Aksha, imported stocks of gyronite grain were transformed in an instant into wriggling masses of a vermin that swept through the streets in a grey-brown swarm, devouring all in their path. Even as they cowered in their mansions, important officials met their end at the edge of a poisoned throwing star, while the city's prime powder works exploded in a fireball of emerald flame that engulfed seven entire districts. In no more than a few hours, the eastern reaches of the Great Parch had become a new bastion of Skavendom that would be known forevermore as the Nor. It was a desolate wasteland of rubble, fire and warpstone over which loomed the protruding vastness of Blight City. In the tortured sky above could be glimpsed the leering visage of a many-horned and verminous monstrosity, beady eyes agleam with triumph. Mortals who met the gaze of this abominable being clawed and gouged their own eyes out in a frenzy of terror. The Great Horned Rat's malevolent design involved more than merely making a swath of the realm of fire his own. His avaricious gaze was cast across each of the eight realms, for he desired to one day transform the entirety of the cosmos into a desolate husk populated solely by his own teeming spawn. In this great masterstroke, he had proved himself the equal of the other ruinous powers, and he ascended to their pantheon in earnest. Reality itself would pay the price. For many long years, Sigmar's grand cities have withstood every grave threat hurled against them, repelling army after army with gunshot blade and spell, now they face the vermin doom, the most dreadful trial in their history, one that will end either in victory or in total annihilation. Always have the great bastions of Sigmar's empire stood on the brink of disaster through the sturdiness of their magically reinforced ramparts and the defiance of their thousands strong armies. They have endured the unendurable. It is remarkable that they have done so whilst also sending Dawnbringer Crusades out in the wilds with orders to seize and colonize new territories. At this, the God King's armies have proved remarkably successful, despite suffering horrendous losses in the process. Even during the bloodiest days of the Era of the Beast, new strongpoints were founded, though many succumbed to the brutality of the Hordes of Destruction before they could consolidate their gains tame the lands around them and become true cities in their own rights. Now that intrepid age of expansion has been thrown into doubt and peril, as the mailed fist of Archeon the Everchosen closes around the throat of civilization, the poisoned daggers of the Skaven sink into its vulnerable underbelly. Suddenly, all the bloody and hard-won victories of the previous generations are exposed as the fragile conquests that they truly are. More than ever, the dream of progress teeters upon a racer's edge. Almost every great city has lived its own nightmare in this new age of war, which doomsayers across the realms are calling the Hour of Ruin. Gaping wounds in the earth are all that remains, where many proud settlements once stood. The grinding of immense warpstone power drills and the gnashing of millions of needle-sharp teeth having heralded their violent collapse. 
Others have been engulfed by howling tides of demons, their high walls and bristling cannon batteries insufficient to repel the numberless hordes. Plagues have transformed luminous spire cities into festering monuments, and even the deep ocean enclaves of the Ironeth Deepkin have been scoured by the swelling tide of disaster, for the deranged ingenuity of the horned rat's spawn can reach even the lightless abyss. Not every foe comes with axe in hand and demons trailing in their wake. Even the most formidable artillery defenses cannot be brought to bear on enemies rising within a city's own walls. Tsinchian cults and secret Slaneshi societies have feasted upon the fear and paranoia welling inside Sigmar's people, and now they emerge from every stratum of society, throwing off their trappings to reveal bodies marked with blasphemous runes. Through blood rituals and symbolic acts of murder, these cultists summon demonic allies, delighting in the frenzy of fire and massacre that follows. Even those strong points that repel the enemy again and again face little prospect of anything but a slow, lingering death, surrounded as they are on all sides by barbarians and storms of fell magic, no allied host can reach them. Many find their vital realm gates have been hopelessly corrupted by chaos, torrents of blood and demon fire now gush from these cursed portals rendering retreat impossible. These stricken cities must keep fighting, for there is no other choice but torment and ruin. Their fate recalls that of the doomed kingdoms left behind during the Age of Chaos. As their ammunition dwindles and their hope begins to fade, the defenders of these ill-fated bastions prepare to die rather than fall into the clutches of the eternal enemy. Yet even in these dark moments, the enterprise and boldness of the God King's folk oft takes their foes by surprise. Appalled by the scale of the destruction unleashed upon his territories, the God King has permitted his most fearsome Stormcast Eternals to enter the fray and stem the tide of darkness. Shorn of hesitancy, doubt and much of their humanity by constant reforging, the warriors of the Ruination Chambers are avatars of pitiless justice, almost as unnerving to their Stormcast kin as they are to the enemy. However, it is this surety of purpose and hardness of soul that makes them the perfect weapons with which to combat the resurgent armies of chaos. Their spirits are adamant, their thunderstrike arms and armor infused with the power of storm and sepulchre. Even the most corrosive magics find no purchase upon their souls. These veteran stormcasts march where others cannot tread, fighting upon battlefields transformed into scenes of apocalypse. By their resolve, the enemy is stymied, sometimes even repulsed. Yet even born as they are upon the currents of Sigmar's Tempest, the stormcasts of the Ruination Chambers alone cannot fight every war that now erupts across the mortal realms. If Sigmar's vision of hope is to survive the gathering darkness, then all must take up the hammer and shed their blood for the course of reason. The fragile alliance of order must hold, and the mistakes of the past must not be repeated. The Sigmarite creed of the cults unbroken teaches that heroes are forged in strife and that only in the darkest moments can the true measure of a mortal's soul be judged. If this is so, then the hour of ruin will prove the ultimate test of Sigmar's new civilization and its people. If they fall to despair, then doom will swiftly follow. The city burns, musket bark and cannons roar, spells scream across the battlefield, and monsters howl through yours stained with the gore of ravaged foes. Walls are torn down with deafening force, and pouring through the breaches come scarred and malformed brutes, 
clad in ensorcelled plate, splitting skulls and opening throats with hacking blows as they bellow their battle oaths to the darkening skies. These ferocious war cries are met in kind as soldiers bearing the heraldry of their home city charge forwards to face the invaders, their shields locked together as a single steel wall, and their voices joined in prayer to the God King. Banners held proudly aloft, they fight and die to the last, spitting defiance in the face of their destroyers. To deny the will of the dark gods in the hour of ruin is to choose to stand upon the precipice of annihilation. But Sigmar's new civilization has not been weakened by centuries of peace or a smug assurance of its own supremacy. Sigmar's people have known nothing but strife and hardship for generations, and history and scripture alike have shown them what becomes of those who bend the knee to evil. Whether toiling in the suffocating smoke pit of a Hammerhallian arms factory, or fighting at the front with fusil in hand, they are filled with righteous purpose and unwavering belief in the God King's wisdom. The pitiless priests of the cult of the Great Wheel preach that this time of adversity is not a curse, but a blessing, a journey of suffering that shall harden the might of mankind and prepare them to rise on the spokes of an era of triumph. Faith is one sturdy shield against the horrors of the hour of ruin, but alone it cannot triumph against demonic wrath and the overwhelming numbers of the Skaven. There is a ruthless arithmetic to matter of survival, and Sigmar's mortals and Stormcast commanders are well versed in its currency. This is a time of impossible choices. Should a city of thousands be left to the sack in order to wrench a vital realmstone quarry from the enemy's grasp? Should an army of seasoned veterans be sent knowingly into the jaws of the beast, their fate serving to draw the enemy into a deadly trap? To which of three besieged cities should a single chamber of Stormcast Eternals be dispatched, condemning the others to ruin? Timidity is a luxury ill afford in such times. It is fortunate, perhaps, that the Dawnbringer Crusades have been given rise to a cater of battle-hardened officers who are no strangers to such stark decisions. Furthermore, humanity shares powerful, if mercurial, allies. The Elf gods of Hish and Algo continues to wage bitter war against the ruinous powers, for their own people suffer terribly in the wake of the chaos resurgence. The Duardin do not retreat to their mountain holes or skyports to wait out the storm, but instead meet it with stubborn determination, whilst the isolationist Eidoneth Deepkin and Arboreal Sylvaneth are forced to acknowledge that they can no longer abide in solitude. Even at this desperate hour, Sigmar refuses to give up his intention to unite the realms. Though the odds of their success have sunk to desperate lows, new Dawnbringer columns plunge into the nightmarish wilds, Armed with potent weaponry, they drive great spear-like assaults into enemy territory. Often these expeditions are tasked not only with seizing lands, but also with restoring vital links shattered by chaos assaults, seeking to relieve those cities not yet devoured by Archeon's armies. Though dozens of Exodus hosts are scattered, slain or swallowed up by the cursed regions known as the Land's Anathema, others survive and even triumph, laying down the foundations of new settlements anointed by the blood sacrifice of countless dawners. These strong points might one day blossom into true bulwarks against the ruinous hordes, if they can last the long night that has fallen across the realms. The Doom Prophets might proclaim the coming of the Second Age of Chaos, but while the spirit of resistance still blazes in the souls of the faithful, the Dark Gods can never truly prevail. My sense of self falls away like sand between my fingers, but the storm giveth still. It has allowed me in my charges in the ruination chamber to walk the blight that has ravaged the east of the parch. I shall commit what I saw to parchment while I still understand its value. The gnaw, 
the madness of the skaven wrought in tortured earth and brass. Through malignant rite and artifice, they have smashed a portion of their subrealm into Akshi above all. The skies are lit by spears of Viridian lightning. Sheets of green flame and mutative dust howl across the lands, settling into drifts that form towers of pulsing warpstone, alive with screaming vermin faces, the land writhes demented in its need to propagate and expand, and the clangor of bells lashes at your flesh and soul. Even most Stormcast cannot abide there for long. Only those whose spirits have become numbed still ever hope. The spires of their sub-realm lair have breached the bedrock, and the five mightiest nexuses have been seized by their so-called great clans. The most terrible of their cities rise towards the Norse epicenter. Whatever name the Ratmen have for it, we have dubbed it Hexnest. From within emerge vast swarms of Skaven, some moving over land like pyroclastic flows, others taking to the seas on rickety craft. There is some master guiding their schemes, a being the Ratmen name in their dying screeches as the Left Claw. Such is the rapacious soul of the Skaven, however, that the Nor would likely continue to expand on its own lunatic volition. Time is against us, more so now than ever. This is me again, Shai again to thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. All of those things help me out immensely. If you feel so inclined, do consider to become a member to gain a greater influence over the content, early access and just generally help me out. If you like this particular video especially much, feel free to click the thanks button as well to leave a small donation. All of those things are 100% optional and I will never keep videos permanently locked behind a paywall as my main goal is to spread the love for these games as much as possible. A special thanks to my members whose legendary names are scrolling right before your eyes at this very instant. Don't forget the games are not only about winning, but also creating unforgettable memories with your friends and opponents. That's it for me. See you soon. Bye bye.